Purposefully hidden from the public eye, a cove in a remote Japanese village is the setting for the brutal slaughter of over 20,000 dolphins annually. Hi, I'm Rebecca Brayton and welcome to WatchMojo.com. Our host Carolina got the chance to speak with Luis Saihoyos, director of The Cove, about this tragedy. We were making a, a making of film. It was basically you know, how we set up this Ocean's Eleven team to penetrate the cove. We didn't need filmmakers to make this film, we needed pirates. What should your audience take away from this film and what can they do, if anything? The Cove to me is not just a film about penetrating the secret cove with an Ocean's Eleven team. It's really sort of a, a microcosmos happening with the greater oceans. Can you tell us something that most of the population won't know about dolphins? Well, I think when you take a wild, sentient, intelligent, sonic creature out of the wild and put them into a concrete tank, and teach them to do stupid tricks for our amusement. It says more about our intelligence and sentience than it does theirs. Why are these dolphins being killed? The Japanese government will tell you it's because the dolphins and the whales are eating too many fish. It's pest control. Is it common knowledge as to what's going on? It's been known for about almost 30 years now. Documentary filmmakers have been trying to get into the cove for quite a while. You know, you can get arrested and thrown in jail and you can, you know, there's people back there that would love to kill you if you got caught back there. Can you tell me some of the tactics that you guys used in order to get some of your footage? We used all sorts of techniques. We enlisted the services of Hollywood, Industrial Light Magic, Lucasfilm. I showed them pictures of the cove and they built these fake rocks that we hid high-def cameras in. We had uh, two Canadian freedivers, world champion freediver, Mandy Ray Cruikshank. She can go down to almost 300 feet on one breath of air and come back up on her own power. She can hold her breath for six and a half minutes. She and her husband, uh, trainer Kirk Crack, helped to set the underwater cameras and the underwater microphones, the hydrophones. Uh, we had another Canadian, uh, Simon Hutchins, who built this fleet of unmanned drones that we used with high def you know, gyro stabilized cameras below them to penetrate the cove from the air. That's why I don't think this film could have been made by a traditional filmmaker. A dolphin is the only wild animal that will come out of nature to save a human being. Throughout history, these animals have been saving the lives of human beings. It's kind of ironic now that the only way that we can save dolphins is to prove to the Japanese government that human beings, have, by dumping so much into the environment that makes them toxic, they're inedible. These small whales are toxic by Japanese standards. They were from five to 5,000 times more mercury than allowed by Japanese law. So we're just saying, consumer beware. Don't trust your government because they're not giving you the truth. Right now, the goal is to, to get the film popular, to get people to go see it, and then to you know, help create this groundswell, this tsunami of negative publicity for the Japanese government to just to do the right thing. At the end of the movie, what you do realize is that one person can make a difference.